blends all right yeah yeah well that's what I want to do tonight right that's why we're having a class You don't shatter. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm sure we'll have a few stragglers. I did get a lot of information that a lot of people are going to be watching from online. So welcome into you two guys, if you guys are online. So we do have a camera in the back. So if you don't want me to repeat your question, you can ask it to me privately afterward. <laughs> but that's fine. We're, we're going to go through some really, I don't know, this, this has like, there's a lot of health rabbit holes. This has the potential to go really deep in a lot of different directions. We were having a conversation this morning about a detox that involved <laughs> drinking your own urine. And I was like, that, that's not the rabbit hole we're going down tonight. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could, we could dive into the science and really dissect that. But uh, what, what I really want to do tonight, guys, is I want to, uh, number one, I want to make sure uh, that I congratulate you guys on being here. Because the people that are here tonight, you guys are, are the lifetime learners. You, you guys are the ones that are going to make it and not just make it, not just survive, but thrive as we get older. Because, you know, honestly, you know, the, the absence of wisdom is what causes God's people to perish. And so it starts with knowledge, right? Knowledge, the application of knowledge is then the wisdom. And so what I'm going to do today is we're going to cover really, says it right here, we're going to expose the most common places that toxins are found. Number one. All right, we're going to dive into all of those so that you guys can go home. You can start looking at those areas and start pulling the things out of your cabinets using the app that I'm going to give you guys access to tonight and pick out things that are on the healthier side of this scale to replace. And number two, we're going to be learning the difference between a detox and a cleanse. Uh, it's, you know, it's a subtle difference, but it, it is a good one to be able to understand and know when to do those things as well. And then number three, we're going to be building a strategic plan to detox from stress. Anybody here dealing with stress tonight? A little bit. Yeah, well, most hands should go up with that one. I talked to you guys in the Bay. Um, identify sources of hazardous exposure in your home. So home is going to be one of these places that's either going to be our safest spot to go or one of the most dangerous spots for us to go, depending on how we address these toxins. So. Before we get into that, uh, I wanted to jump in here and talk a little bit about us. So you guys recognize these folks, I hope. At least saw us on the way in, right? Yeah, so I'm Dr. Jake. I own the clinic. We've been here, it'll be seven years this Halloween. So uh, yeah, real, really exciting. Like, it's fun to be here, fun to be in practice. Been doing this over a decade now. Uh, just really incredible. I love being a chiropractor. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go on about myself, but really the all-star here tonight is Cheryl. You know, my, my singular decade barely, barely tracks with her nearly four decades in healthcare. She's been a nurse uh, for longer than I've been alive. <laughs> yeah. What, what year did you graduate nursing school? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> oh, 86. Okay. So no, I've, I've been alive slightly longer. I was I was barely out of diapers. <laughs> Isn't that incredible though? Like yeah. we can, you know, to be able to team up with somebody who brings that much experience to yeah. the field. I I just love that. Um, yeah. So she's been doing doing nursing for that long, 
but she's also been a teacher uh, for the last two decades almost. And she's taught pharmacology, she's taught pathology, pathophysiology. She sometimes brings up some of the classes that she's tutoring on because she still loves teaching so much that she tutors on the side and it just brings back nightmares of my time in school. <laughs> it's like, oh, don't ask me a hard question. <laughs> I don't wanna go there. But yeah, she's awesome. She's going to be diving into nutrition again for us tonight and really dissecting that when it comes to toxins. And that's a, that's a really big part of this. Um, but really why we're here uh, has to do with uh, our mission. You know, and we, we really want to transform the state of Nebraska. We're, we're the heartland. We're the dead center of the country. And so as we go, the rest of the nation goes. And um, we're not we're not setting the trend. We're not setting the standard for anybody except for in sickness and disease. And so our job here is to empower longer, healthier lives through chiropractic care and the application of the five essentials. And what are the five essentials? Mindset, nerve supply, nutrition, fitness, oxygen supply, and toxicity. And so we'll be going through all those five, breaking them down here tonight. But I really want to start at the beginning as we jump into this. So each of you, when you came in for your initial visit, you heard the story of chiropractic. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't skip that part. Pretty cool story, right? It has almost nothing to do with toxins, the initial part of the story. Deaf janitor gets his hearing back with a first time chiropractic adjustment. Had no clue that it affected hearing. And then, so they thought it was the cure for deafness. So they started bringing in all these folks that had hearing loss and not all of them got their hearing back. And they're like, what the heck, man? What, what's up with the hearing? Like this guy gets it back, but this guy doesn't. But, oh, this guy, his headaches went away. Or this guy, his back pain and sciatica went away. Or this guy, you know, he was having these uh, uh, ringing in his ears and he still can't hear, but he doesn't hear the ringing either. So I think that's an improvement, <laughs> right? And so then they're like, okay, so what, what is really going on? And they're like, oh yeah. So interference to the nervous system affects the expression of life because that's basically how life is communicated. And Dee Dee Palmer, the, the founder, he went on to found like 100 different chiropractic schools right off the bat. He's like, everybody needs to know about this. We can impact the nervous system without cutting people open at all. Like, it's incredible. And so he, he started developing like textbooks and a curriculum. He didn't, you know, he knew it wasn't enough to just adjust people because they had to have some explanation as to what they were doing, educate the patients and help them teach other people what was going on so that people could start getting healthier on a bigger basis. And, and what, he, what he developed as he jumped into the philosophy of healing is that things that interfere with the nervous system can basically be found in three categories. Number one, thoughts. Obviously, everyone here has admitted to stress already, right? So anybody ever, you know, get a stress headache or know somebody that's gotten a stress headache? Yeah, it's a real thing. Stress, negative thoughts, negative emotions definitely can impact. I, I mean, I see people under stress. Like, this is a healthy posture here. People under stress have this posture. You can, you can tell when somebody's under stress. They wear it in their spine. Number two is traumas. And this is classic chiropractic, right? You slip on a banana peel and fall on your back. You shovel in snow and go too far. Oh, that went out, right? Or the, the common postures like sitting too long at a desk or looking down at our smartphones or working on a laptop computer or driving for hours on end. Yeah, that too. And so number two would be those physical traumas. And those absolutely can create disconnection between the brain and the body and lead to disease. But one that's underexplored and one that uh, Didi found out pretty early on was toxicity. Right? Toxicity absolutely interferes with the nervous system. And we know this through you know, all our research on chemicals and the chemicals we've been exposed to in the last century, especially those, because we've experienced more new exposures in the last century than the rest of history combined. Right? I mean, except for maybe the first guy who dug underground to go find some iron ore or silver or gold. Like, you know, he might have been exposed to more than they had been exposed to before. But now in the last hundred years, it just dwarfs everything else because of our, our, our expansion of research, right? We're trying to find out more things. We're going into space, we're encountering new things and that leads to ways that the human body has to respond differently. So, you know, you look at the stats and you do all the math, it's 700,000 toxic chemicals that we're exposed to every single day. And I've heard numbers higher, I've heard numbers lower. This is a nice middle number. Nice, right? 700,000, where's all that coming from? 
You can just set it under under the chair. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. We'll we'll clean it up later. So we have we have to figure out how to get that down because when we look at the stats, the things that are most likely to kill us: heart disease, cancer, medications. Right? Those are the top three causes of death, and they have been consistently every single year. And our life expectancy, it's gone down. It was going down even before COVID. For the last five years, it's gone down every single year. Five years ago, average life expectancy in the United States was right around 80 years old. A little higher for women, a little lower for men. But right now, the average is at 76. Really? We've lost almost five years if you're a woman in this room tonight. You've lost almost five years of life expectancy in the last five years. <laughs> Right, but that's that's average. And you look at life expectancy and really where we should be, research shows us that we have the capacity to live to 120 years in full health. And so something's robbing us of that. And one of the biggest correlations to that is the increase in exposures that we've had over the last five years. Stress, number one, right? We were all freaking out about COVID. Number two. Well, we were all stuck inside, so what we were doing all the time, sitting and down in front of our screens, whatever type of screen it was, and our posture got awful, right? I, I had a gal that um, actually broke her shoulder uh, right around Thanksgiving last year, and it was right in the middle of a move, and she was moving a little further away, and so she went from seeing me once a week, every single week, to not at all for about three months. This is a gal that's taking care of her spine beautifully for the last six years. And those three months were awful for her. When I saw her again, you'd think, just a broken arm, right? She just has to wear a sling. She can do everything else. She just has to wear that sling. She yeah. looked like she had aged a decade taking those three months off. That, I mean, you get, when you get stagnant, when you stop moving, it really gets to you. And then you're stuck inside too, right? Because if you're not going out, you're not getting fresh air. Happened to be the coldest time of the year. We're just coming out of that. Thank goodness for that. Hopefully no more snow, knock on wood. <laughs> right? It's April in Nebraska. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, no, we're exposed to so much stuff. So one of the first things that we have to do is we have to define a toxin. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. Substances or chemicals that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life that can cause damage to humans, whether immediate or over time. And so that, that's a really broad definition. And I mean, technically, food can be a toxin, like even real food coming out of the ground. You can get too many oranges, especially if you're diabetic, right? You get too many oranges, you're diabetic, put yourself in a diabetic coma. That sugar that's coming out of the orange, even though it's healthy, typically, is too much. It'll overwhelm your system. But then we have things on the other side of the spectrum, you know, something like chlorine gas can be incredibly de deadly in a heavy concentration, right? And so we got we to gotta kind of work this thing out. How are, how are we being exposed to it? And how are we working out of it, right? So and then what are our most toxic exposures? One of the scariest things here is we can't trust the FDA or the USDA to govern this. They've gotten so much wrong, especially over the last three years. Like you look at, and this just... This made me so angry so many times over the last three years. I almost don't want to say it anymore because it's better to stay positive about stuff. But I mean, just the research about something like vitamin D3 in COVID. Cultures that had more natural exposure to sunshine had lower COVID rates. But the USDA, the FDA, you know, anybody in the White House or anybody in the CDC, nobody came out and said, hey, you know what, guys, we should go get more sunshine. Cultures that get more sunshine have lower COVID risks. Nobody said anything about that. You know, and then they said, oh, let's try this medication to treat COVID people. I ended up killing a bunch of people. Let's try this medication to try to take care of people that have COVID. Oh, ends up killing a bunch of people. Yeah, they've gotten so much wrong. And I want to believe that it's just good people making mistakes. But it's almost too intentional. It's almost too intentional. And, and you look at like even just medications you, and you go into medical schools or schools in healthcare in general. And, you know, you go into like a medical ethics class with pharmacology and you ask them, 
how many people would have to die before we would pull a drug from the market? Is, is one person enough to pull a drug from the market? Not to them. It, is 10? No. It, it, there's no set number. It's dollars. Dollars made versus dollars lost in the lawsuit. Right? Dollars lost in the penalties. Like even just, you know, you look at Purdue Pharm Pharmaceutical Company that developed the opioid medications, killed how many hundreds of thousands of Americans, millions of Americans over the last several decades, right? It was about 2005 when all this was really getting big with opioids. It's the number seven cause of death in the United States, opioid use, not abuse, just use, opioid use. And they got penalized a couple billion. They still made more than that. And so for them, the Purdue family, it was worthwhile. And so at a minimum, I don't trust these people. You know, my wife was looking up a medication this morning and she's like, what do you think of that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and I looked up the mechanism and I was like, well, the mechanism sounds right, but I just don't trust them to tell me the truth about these things. So we got to we got to dive deeper. There's about 800 commonly used substances that you'll find in just about anything around you that are known endocrine disruptors. What's, a, what's an endocrine disruptor? Think, think hormones. When you hear endocrine, think hormones. Think insulin. Think how you process blood sugar. Think how you how, how, how you make cholesterol. Cholesterol is the backbone, you know, of, of all these hormones. You know, think your health because just about every single cellular process in the body requires hormones. And so we're exposed to all these things that disrupt that system, that backup system of communication between the brain and the organs, endocrine system, chemically communicating different things in different processes. And there's about 800 of them. And the reason why there's a plastic silverware there and a plastic container is because most of it's found in plastics, right? It's coming from these things that have been designed out of crude oil, byproducts that we can't turn into gasoline, right? And it did great, great to get us to the moon, but now it's slowly robbing us years of life and life out of our years. Toxic exposure is linked to a weakened immune system, allergies and asthma, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, autism, ADD, ADHD, birth defects, cancers, hormone imbalances, reproductive disorders, Alzheimer's and dementia, autoimmune diseases, neurological disorders, anxiety, depression, and mental health issues. Does that sound like a big deal? Does it sound like everything that we're dealing with right now? Should we be paying more or less attention to this? Yeah, I mean, think about all the news that guns and gun violence is getting right now. Awful, awful stuff that's happening with guns. I don't, and I don't really care where you stand on it one way or the other. The deaths due to that versus the deaths due to this, it, it's not even close. It's not even close. It's almost like they're pointing the camera over here so that you don't have to worry about all the money that's being made over here. So we have to pay attention. If we want to be healthy, we have to be the ones to pay attention because even the doctors aren't trained in this. I wasn't trained in this in chiropractic school. I had to learn it on my own. You know, fortunately, I have a group called Max Living that pays attention to this stuff and we come together and we put our brains together and we look up things and we find organizations that are doing the research and we partner with them. And you'll see some of those as we get into this. So where are we gonna find these? Toxic hotspots, write these down because we're gonna be covering these. Number one is gonna be your personal care products. Think beauty, right? Things that we put on our skin. Number two, household cleaners and products because you live in the space that you're putting all this stuff in. Number three, plastics, just in general. Four, processed foods and genetically modified organisms. Number five, the overuse of pills, pills, specifically medications, and then air and water. Ooh, vital for life, right? We need those things. Can't survive more than three minutes without air, can't survive more than three days without water. So we need that, and we need it to be a good source as well. So our five steps to terminating toxins. Number one, we're gonna cut processed foods. Yeah. Number two, we're gonna check our house. We're gonna look for this stuff. We're gonna look for toxins in the house. We're gonna get them out. Number three, we have to decrease our stress. But 
focusing on stress actually increases the stress and increases the effects of the stress. So how do we deal with that? Number four, we've got to sweat more. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. Number five, we've got to keep our spine locked. Right? So let's dive in. Step number one, I'm going to pass it off to Cheryl. <laughs> you ready for this, Cheryl? <laughs> Okay, foods, <laughs> food, food. Um, obviously, it's essential, right? We have to have it, can't survive. But processed foods, what do we put, we don't, what is put in our foods to make it last longer? Preservatives, okay? What do we put in our food to make it prettier? Dyes, okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I got over here. So we put preservatives in it. We put dyes in them. Um, we put lots of stuff in the, chemi in the food to make it last on the shelf. Have you looked at the shelf life of some of those things? Two years for something. Some things it's even longer. A can of vegetables or something it's a year and a half and if you um I've, I've done some volunteer work at the food bank and you know even if it's like six months after that expiration date you can still give it away yeah. Yeah. because it's gonna last okay um radio station that i listen to occasionally they're advertising buy our products so that you have a food reserve that will last you for 25 years yeah. have you seen that that's what i want on my shelf is in my stomach something that's going to last for 25 years you know um, chemicals are everywhere um, what are some chemicals that you can think of that are put in our foods or just to raise the foods. The fertilizer, the, the pesticides, herbicides, hormones, they give our cows hormones, they give our chickens hormones, they give them antibiotics, um, all kinds of things to make more milk, to grow faster, grow bigger, you know, any number of things. They spray chemicals on the food to make it ripen at the right time so that they can pick them early and get them to us before they're spoiled and rotten. So they pick them unripe, spray them when they get here so that we're ready to eat them. I was just looking up because, um, you know, California has a lot of restrictions that only apply in California, not the rest of the United States. Some of those things. So a law that, that's in front of the legislature right now is to um, make Skittles illegal or ban Skittles. It's not the Skittles. That's another story. That's the inflammation workshop and the sugar. But it's the red dyes that they're putting in it. Those are illegal in Europe. They've changed their formula to sell Skittles in Europe, but they won't change the formula here because it's okay, it's deemed safe. But we don't know what safe is, right? We have no clue in the world what level of red dye number three or yeah. six or whatever is safe for our bodies. I would assume zero, but, you know, it's not. Um, some of the most common toxic foods, your fried foods, okay? That goes without saying, what is in that fried food? What do we fry it in? You know, oils, canola oil, okay? Um, vegetable oil. How much do you have to process a vegetable to get oil out of it? You know, how much do you have to pr process an olive to get oil out of it? Not near as much. How about an avocado? You know, those are really good sources. Coconut, exactly. Your packaged foods, we've kind of talked about that. To keep it on the shelf, 
long enough. Plus, what do they wrap it in? Plastic. Okay. GMOs. Um, just about every grain that you can think of is GMO. A lot of genetically modified. Again, they want it resistant to disease. They want it resistant to bugs. They want it resistant to, they want it to grow more so that they keep modifying these and working in their little laboratories. We've kind of touched on artificial colors with the red dye, but there's a whole host of other blues and any other colors out there that are also um, toxic to us. Um, but we don't know. Again, we don't know how much is too much. And then artificial sweeteners, we've heard about the aspartame. We've heard about um, saccharin. We've heard about a lot of those. So the stevia is, is the best recommended sweetener. Um, it is natural. It's, monk fruit is a good one too. Those aren't natural. They're not the artificial ones. Okay. We at Max Living do have two plans, um, two nutrition plans, the advanced plan and the core plan. The advanced plan, we look at grass-fed meats and grass-finished meats um, and products from those cows. So the milk, the cheeses that come from those grass-fed, grass-finished. We want wild-caught fish and cold water, i.e. the Pacific Ocean, is going to be better because what they do on the Atlantic, they feed them so that they will come to a particular area and they can farm them easier. As even though they're in the wild, they are there in a particular location so that they will can be caught easier. Um, Alaskan caught, Pacific caught, much much better. Um, free range poultry, again, cage. We don't want them. Just cage-free may not mean they get out in the sun. It may not mean they ever get to expand their wings. just means they're not in a little two-by-two -two cage. So free range, those chickens that get to go outside and get to peck at the bugs and get to, you know, whatever they can find, eggs from those. Um, eliminating refined carbohydrates and sugars. <laughs> that's a big problem. Substitute, make those good changes, those healthy changes. The advanced plan, we focus on fruits that are low glycemic, things that are not going to raise your blood sugars. Berries, so your strawberries, your blueberries, your blackberries, your lemons, limes, grapefruits, oranges to an extent. Um, Granny Smith apples are a good one on there that are not going to raise your blood sugars and they're on the advanced plan. No um, grains on the advanced plan. This is our healing diet. We usually recommend it for a month or two to get to a healing place to heal that gut and then you can go on to the core plan. Oops. Did I go? Okay. So I guess we don't have a slide on the core plan. So the core plan basically is this, except that we can add back in some of those grains. Unless you're intolerant to particular grains, then you can add those back in. And that would be the type of plan that you would maintain on for life. Okay. So toxic bioaccumulation, big words. <laughs> we accumulate over time what we're exposed to. Our liver detoxifies. Our kidneys excrete. But they can't handle all this stuff that we're putting in our bodies or that our bodies are being exposed to we're seeing issues two and three generations down the line 
because it follows. Okay. Personal example. I don't know what I may have been exposed to, but when I was, um, as a child, I lived out in farming community. Um, now, as an adult, my daughter has a, an autoimmune disease. My brother's daughter has an autoimmune disease. A very good friend of mine who I grew up with, her daughter has an autoimmune disease. Something happened. There was some type of an exposure when we were growing up and we since passed that on to our daughters. You know, who knows what it was, but that's bioaccumulation. Okay. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You know, we didn't know, and you know, we didn't know what that was then. We knew it was, going to make the crops better or kill the bugs, whatever, you know, whatever it might have been. Through time, we see examples of this. Um, the nuclear bombs. We did, we saw those who survived had children and grandchildren who had de um, defects, deformities, yeah. genetic problems because of that exposure. It will change my DNA and the DNA that I pass on and the DNA that my kids pass on. So that's bioaccumulation. My mom always said that my dad grew up in the Kansas area mm -hmm. and died of cancer. And then um, my daughter and my sister-in-law grew up there too. And they said in their block, every single family yeah. almost had a cancer. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. mom didn't get it because she grew up in a different place and she wasn't exposed as a child. To whatever, to whatever, yeah. was. whatever it was. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. I can't yeah. remember my dad ever used in fertilizer or anything. I mean, we just did it naturally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my uncle sprayed DDT on all of us. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. There were medications in the 60s yeah. to help moms who had had miscarriages not have another miscarriage. Mm -hmm. I, offhand, I don't remember what it was, but there you go, DES. Terrible. Thank it worked. Uh, it, didn't, it prevented the miscarriages, but those babies were born... Were born with defects, or those who did survive, pass that along to their children. So that's a lot of what we're talking about here. And we, you know, we don't know the impact. Agent Orange, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's one now, Camp Lejeune. I, there's, I'm always getting ads. If you were a loved one, you know, um, we're around Camp Lejeune and something about the water and the, you know. So, yeah, there you go. More recently. Exactly. Exactly. And we don't know. We just don't know. Okay. So modern farming practices, like it says, depleted the soil. Studies show the food is lower uh, levels of nutrients than in the past. We know that. A carrot or a potato isn't near as nutritious today as it was 50 years ago, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Regenerative farming focuses on repairing the nutrients in the soil, leading to more nutrient-dense foods. Absolutely. We need to... Pardon? Turn it over. Uh-huh. Yep. All your nutrients... Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. So... Yeah. People are starting to think about how to to restore some of the 
the nutrients in, in what we are growing. But as the population grows, there's, again, more pressure to grow faster, grow more, provide calories, even if they're empty calories, non-nutritious. Okay. So the top detoxifying nutrients, magnesium oxide. Um, and magnesium is awesome. Magnesium is used for three, 400 different um, chemical reactions in your body. So it's pretty important. Um, cholerea, yeah. superoxide, dismutase, psyllium husk. Psyllium husk is in a lot of um, bulk laxatives. Activated charcoal. We use that to detox. We use that also if somebody's taking an overdose of something to detox or to neutralize. And then proteins. Again, we want the healthy proteins, the good proteins. Bone broth is good. Absolutely. Okay. So, did I, am I going the wrong way? There. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the toxin bundle, the bone broth protein, and the detox system. So that's our featured products. The detox system is two products, a cell detox and a body detox. Typically, you take the cell detox first thing in the morning. You take the body detox before you go to bed. Some of the people that I've listened to who some of the speakers have taken it, um, the one lady, I don't know if you've listened to her, lost 10 and a half pounds when she took it. Of course, it was post-pregnancy too, so that might have had something to do with it. But you can lose weight. You can detox because those toxins take up a lot of room. Where are the toxins stored? In the fat cells, okay? If we're detoxing, we're opening up those fat cells. We're getting those toxins out and they're being excreted. These are gentle enough. They don't cause a lot of diarrhea. You're not in the bathroom for a month. Um, you get a one month supply. You can take the whole month worth or you can do it for a week at a time and do a week for four months. However you want to do that and whatever's necessary. Usually the first time they want you to, to do it for the 30 days to, to get fully detoxed and then repeat it um, maybe once every three months or something to that effect. So that's this one on here, the detox? The detox system. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that all three? The detox system is the box oh, that see. has the cell, de the cell detox and the uh, body detox. These two are bone broth. One's chocolate and one's vanilla. The bone broth proteins. You put them in your water or your coconut milk or whatever you want to mix them in. Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> As he did that this, tonight, didn't he? Are you going to talk about the different nutrients? So the Max Cleanse is um, gentler. Do you, you have more? I'll talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, this, this kind of gets into what I was saying about uh, let, let's uh, kind of break down what a cleanse is versus what a detox is. Um, and really, you can you can define it however you want to. You know, one's designed to go quickly. Um, and really, when you look at our detox system and you compare it to anything that's out there on the market, you, I mean, go back to this nutrient list. All of these things minus the protein are in the detox system, right? And so you compare it, and not just bang for buck, but like compare it pound for pound with any other detox product on the market. And this will get it out of you better than anything other than an emergency room 
with a poison patrol or poison mm-hmm. control type of phone call, right? Because its job is to help bind and cleanse it. It's gentler than the emergency room visit because we don't want you to have to take 90 days to recover from that, right? But this is something that I do probably three or four times a year just because of how exposed we all are. Like, I mean, it's coming off the paint in the walls. It's coming out of the carpet. It's coming off the ceiling tile. It's coming out of my car. Like, you're, you're not going to avoid toxins. Even before all these things were invented, there were toxins that our bodies were exposed to. So that, that bind, it and then... bind and flush is okay. basically cell bind, body flush, mm-hmm. right? And some, some patients will say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the runs with it. It's going too fast. I'll actually have you flip the morning and evening dose, and it will slow it down a little bit uh, just because it is – designed to sync with the hormones that go through the liver and go through the kidneys and push out toxins through the skin. And if you do it at the right times of day, it's more effective. If you do it at the opposite times of days, it slows down a little bit, but it's still good, right? We still want to get it out, even if it's a little slower. The Max Cleanse has a lot of the same ingredients, but in much lower dosage. And so you can, I mean, basically the price difference you see on there is the amount of nutrient difference in there there's a few things that are in here that aren't in the cleanse and the cleanse i mean you could drink juice and it could be a cleanse like a green juice you could drink bone broth and it'd be cleansing to you You could drink lemon water with apple cider vinegar in it and it's cleansing to you right it it does flush some stuff out but it's not binding stuff it's it's like almost like a boost to that detoxification system by giving it certain nutrients that help it's like even just magnesium, if you were to just take an Epsom salt bath, you'd get a little bit of a cleansing out of that, but you're not going to get a full doc- detoxification unless you get the entire detoxification system on board. And that's where all the other ingredients in this come in. And so let's talk about the bundle for a minute. So uh, the bundle includes both the protein and or the detox system or the max cleanse. So you have to get the protein. And then the detox system or the cleanse go with it, right? And to, for that, you get 20% off. And in addition to that, we're going to talk about it in a minute, uh, but the infrared sauna, you get whatever bundle you want of those at 50% discount. And so if you want four sessions in the infrared sauna, we sell four for 50. That's four for 25. If you just want one session in the infrared sauna, guess what? That's free. Just one, your first one. If you want to use it after that, it's $20 a session. But if you just want the free one and then the additional one, that's only $10. If you want a whole month as often as you can come, unlimited, we usually sell that for $100. It's just 50 bucks. So that's if you get one of the bundles tonight. You can obviously buy anything. Everything is 15% off tonight. That's one of my gifts for the attendees, the physical in-person. Sorry, you guys online. All right, rush over here, buy some stuff. I, I see a few faces that have done that before, right? You got to be physically here to take advantage of the discounts tonight. But yeah, so some really incredible prices, but then you throw in the infrared sauna on top of that to make it even better. So supplements can also be toxic though, right? You can get some really bad, really bad supplements. And here, here's what I'll tell you. If the company that's making the supplement invests dollars in advertising it, they're stealing that money from the content the nutrient content in there and they're very likely to take shortcuts so let's let's look at like a a protein even if it's a bone broth protein what's the most common thing that you're going to find in there number one ingredient corn maltodextrin and what's what's going to be from is it going to be from organic corn or is it going to be from conventional gmo corn right and hopefully that's a little bit better, hopefully, right? But you have to look. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and in ours, like, yeah, it's 70 bucks for a 30-day supply, which sounds like a lot. But there's no fillers at all. There's no artificial colors. You know, what's, what's, the, what's the cheap one going to be uh, sweetened with? Sorbitol. It's going to have maybe some aspartame. You know, some of these artificial sweeteners that aren't any good for us and are toxic on their own. So you got to look at these ingredients in these things. Yeah. There was a study done on Amazon supplements, just not a specific brand, just all the Amazon supplements. And what they found is that 90% of them did not have in there what they said they had in there, wow. even on the label. And it's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll just go get a better deal. 
it's not a better deal if it doesn't have in it what it's supposed to have in there, even if the label says it's the exact same thing. And on top of that, they went in and they looked at, you know, what's, you know, what are some of these toxic things that we can find in them? Things like cadmium. They're finding cadmium in some of the supplements. They're finding things that, you know, heavy metals and, you know, different, you know, pesticides and herbicides. It's like, and because they're trying to extract so many nutrients from the plant, they're also extracting high levels of these pesticides and herbicides as well. And so that's part of the reason why I actually carry supplements is so that you guys have a safe source to go to. You're getting, you know, really, as far as pound for pound value per dollar, you're getting better than anywhere else. In fact, if you go to make your own supplements and you go to the company, you say you want all this stuff in there that we've got in just our bone broth protein, which I, I was going to grab a bundle, but whatever. It, it's back here. All right. Our bone broth protein. It's just pure bone broth and a little bit of stevia to keep it sweet and a lot of chocolate to make it taste like chocolate without the sugar, right? Yeah. You, you find that you know, somewhere else, it's going to have artificial colors, artificial sweeteners, all this different stuff in it. So we want to make sure that we're getting just what it says in there. All right. Uh, yeah, quality of your supplements matters. Absolutely. Now, we shouldn't be relying on our supplements to do this stuff. In fact, we don't need to. But we do have, um, and this is, obviously, we're still using the old label on this. Uh, we've updated our brands since this one was produced. Produced, And uh, the Pure Path label is now what we're focusing on because this is actually made with regenerative farming. It's not just organic anymore. We're taking it the next step down and the price didn't change at all. The quali quality and quantity uh, actually went up in this change. So you're getting a high, higher quality product than you used to. Yeah, so the ingredient list here, it's got bone broth protein, natural flavors, which is chocolate, cocoa powder, medium chain triglycerides, right? Healthy fats, stevia leaf extract powder, and then silicone dioxide is just a little bit of a preservative in there so it doesn't start caking up on you. So very, very high quality product and that doesn't change it at all except it just goes from organic to regenerative farming. So how long is something like that work? 30 days if you take it scoop by scoop, okay. <laughs> right? It's you can do less. Like I, I usually put it in a smoothie or my coffee. I don't put a full scoop in my coffee typically. That's like one scoop. I, I put between all of you, I put three scoops, scoops of protein in there, right? So you'd have to drink a lot of coffee, which I love to do, to get that much protein in there. But you know, you can you can definitely do that. As far as shelf stable, um, if you keep it sealed, I believe it's good for about a year. If you unseal it, you're going to want to consume it a little bit faster. You don't have to refrigerate it, thank God. But, <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely good stuff. All right, number two. We spent a lot of time on food, didn't we? Number two, let's kind of go a little faster. We need to check our home. And some of the big things we need to check for here are popped up right here. So pans. We were just having a conversation about pans coming in here after her adjustment. Uh, but, yeah, you want to look at what you're cooking things with. Because 100% of what you put in your mouth goes into your digestive system, doesn't it? Right, because your mouth is part of the digestive system. And yes, your body does have defense mechanisms on the inside, but if it's inside you, it's far more likely to stay inside you than if it stays on the outside of you. And so what you're cooking your food with matters. So what are the safe pans? Well, there's only two safe pans that I would cook every single meal in without any concern, and that would be stainless steel and cast iron. Cast iron. Yeah. Yep. Stainless steel and cast iron. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. You get the nonstick stuff. Yeah. I mean, you you put a canary like not directly over the stove. You're not cooking it, but like just off to the side. Some of like you and you heat that pan. It off gases and that canary will die. Just like you, they used to take a bird into the mines. Yeah. And yeah, if you're standing over there cooking it, you're getting the same thing. Your toxic dose is way higher than a canary's toxic dose, so very unlikely for you to die in that minute, but that gets into your system, and it's persistent you know, organic pollutants for sure. And then cleaning ingredients. So let's, let's jump into air quality first. Um, so things that we want to look out for air quality. Big ones, radon. Obviously, it's the number two cause of cancer right now, um, or lung cancer behind tobacco, obviously, if you're a smoker, radon's not as much of a worry for you because the cigarette's going to get you first. Uh, but radon's definitely up there. And 
mold can be more toxic than both of those. It can kill you really quickly. We lost a, a doctor friend of mine, chiropractor that was living this lifestyle and he just didn't find the mold in his house until it was too late and gave him an extremely aggressive cancer. So we got to watch out for those three. Those are the big three. If you're, if you're married to a smoker, either kick him out of the house or sleep in different houses, <laughs> right? You know, cause they're going to kill you. Secondhand smoke is just as dangerous as firsthand smoke. Cooking and heating. We got to look at our pans, right? Got to look at those pans, what they're cooking, but also what are we cooking with? A gas stove does have the potential to leak. And if you use too much of it, that gas that leaks out can get nerve, can raise the carbon dioxide levels and really, you know, really do a bad job. If you cook with a wood stove or you sit too close to a fire too often or even just grilling, like it can be really bad for you, really toxic for you. So you got to look out for those, what you're cooking with and what you're eating with. Uh, air fresheners. Just use essential oils. Like there are no good, safe air fresheners out there. I mean, maybe there are, but not really. Paints, yeah, they're, they're all off-gassing. The newer it is, the more it's good. Open your windows, right? Finally, it's spring. We can open our windows. The air outside is somewhere between 20 and 200 times cleaner than inside. And that's even with us having a red alert, yeah. smoke in the air coming from Kansas and Iowa. It's still cleaner outside than it is inside. Pesticides, cleaners, off-gassing, getting in our house. You, I mean, my, my wife hates, like, we, we lived in Atlanta and we lived in Naples, roaches, right? Cockroaches, they're, they're the worst, right? And so she kept a, a can of highly toxic chemical stuff in case I wasn't ever home to deal with it, right? And then what did we have to do? Well, we had to open all the windows and, take, you know, deep clean the area and keep our kid away from it because it was so toxic. You know, if it's designed to kill something, you know, it'd probably kill other things as well. And then furniture. You know, since the 1970s, they put these flame retardants in all of our furniture, mattresses included, something that we put our face directly on every single night. And now we know that it causes cancer and it has endocrine disruptors in it. And so we got to watch our furniture. We got to make sure it off gases. We got to open our doors and open our windows as often as possible, even in the winter sometimes. A lot of plants, yes, exactly. So they put flame retardant in it so that it doesn't burn out from underneath you. The flame retardant actually has a chemical that you know, will kill you, right? So, yes, ventilate regularly. They still do it. Yeah, it's still got it in there. Yeah, I got an organic mattress, you know, in case anybody's wondering. But yeah. Yeah, recalling pajamas because they don't have the flame retardant in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in all the furniture. Anything that could burn, they have to put it in. And then if it does burn, you want to get as far away from it as possible, right? Don't just throw it on the wood fire and then roast your marshmallows, right? <clears throat> so ventilate regular. House plants, yes, you said that. There, there are some that give off more oxygen than others and clean better than others. IQ Air is a phenomenal room air filter. IQ Air, that's the brand's name. Uh, I don't do that. I just open the windows and doors. Um, and Telepure Ultra Fine 468, that's another one. And Blue Air is another one. And just replace your regular HVAC filters regularly, to, twice a year, ideally. I mean, if it's blowing through dirt, that dirt's going to eventually make its way through and it's not going to filter as well. Yeah, and inside your house, and, or sorry, inside your car too. All right, well, water quality. So let me flip forward and back with this. Pastor. <laughs> I have a pastor. Jake. Yes, Pastor Jake, Dr. Jake. Yes, ma'am. Um, so HVAC, you're talking about the... By the furnace. Furnace. Yeah, yeah. furnace and air conditioner. Yeah. Okay. There's a big, like, square one for the air filter. Conditioner? It should be the same system. Okay. okay. Depending on the age of the house and what I type of air conditioner. Okay. Not... And yeah, and the return. Yes, exactly. So this is, this is Lincoln. Most of us live in Lincoln. If you're not living in Lincoln, you get a different, you know, water you know, source on this, but you look at, look at this, 14 of the 28 total contaminants were found in Lincoln's water. Like this is, this is not better than anywhere else. This is, this is awful. Uh, I saw, I saw the same report for um, Arlington, Texas, and I saw it for Norman, Oklahoma, and it was just as bad.
is either of those places. And we have more water supply than these guys do. Um, arsenic, there was 16 or 1,670 times the recommended amount, which is still less than what the FDA allows, but not safe. I don't want arsenic, bromate, 18 times. Uh, bromochloroacetic acid, 233 times. Bromochloromethane, methane gas, awful, 188 times. 30 times with chloroform. Anyone here of chloroform gas? Yeah, 49 times the dibro dibromoacetic acid. 74 times the dibromochloromethane, again, in methane gas. Dichloroacetic acid. And these are just the ones I could fit on the slide. All right, the list is actually twice as long as that. Yep. So this is actually from ewg.org. Uh, you just Google it and look for their water report. Is there any coloring in any of that? In any of this? I don't even think it looked for the colors. It does. Yeah. I've noticed that they're not. You've noticed some color changes yeah, with it? A, a yeah. Pinkish. Mm. Had yeah. Colors yeah. in the shower. Yeah. But they also put soft. Yeah. Well, and it. it yeah, reverse osmosis is absolutely the best way to get that stuff out. No, for pets. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to do like, and this too, it's not just water that you drink. About 30% of what makes it on your skin gets inside your body. So it's also how you're taking your bath, how you're showering, you know, just even washing your face. Like you, you want to keep this as clean as possible. And this isn't even, a, they're not measuring things like the, the medications that make it in there, right? We, we get a small dose of birth control medication. We get a small dose of um, uh, uh, blood pressure medication, of uh, uh, cholesterol medication, like these medications that persist in the environment, you know, they're in the water supply, they're in the groundwater. And it's making its way up just because of how many that we use. So, yes, what are our action steps? So a great first step, if you haven't done anything with your water yet, is go to Aquasana's website. And I think it doesn't actually have a U. I think I mistyped that. That's A-Q-U-A-S-A-N-A. A-Q-U-A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. Aquasana. So that's, yep, yeah, that's the place to start. Yep, Aquasana. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> that they have all sorts of different water filtration products. Everything from shower filters to um, you can put a sink filter in. You can they can even do a whole house filter for you if you want to go down that road. But start with something. Start with something that you can afford. I do a um, we do Aquasana uh, shower filters for both of our showers in our house, and then we do um, a Berkey uh, countertop filter for all of our drinking water as well. So we're not 100% perfect in our house, but we are actually saving money to invest in a whole house system so that we don't have to worry about spraying each other with a hose, right? Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y. Yeah. So yeah, shower filters, great. Drinking water and then whole house system. So that's the way that you invest there. Because if you get a shower filter, guess what you can do? You can go to the shower and you can fill up your glass of water and it's going to be better than the tap water is going to be. Um, I like to take a bath and lay yeah. in a hot water. Yeah, I do too. I don't fit in many bathtubs, but I like to. <clears throat> yes. So we do have reverse osmosis where we live. Awesome. We also have soft water. Did mm -hmm. I read somewhere that soft water is better than that? We're going to read that. Soft water. <sighs> so it, it depends. So like hard water has more minerals in it, okay. right? And so if it's in the water, then it's going to okay. absorb into your skin. And but that makes it harder for your soap to work. And so then you have to use more soap. And so if you're using toxic soap, that's actually worse for you because you're trying to get it to suds in your hair. So charcoal? charcoal filters are great, too. Yeah. yeah, but it just depends on the quality of the filter, what it's designed to filter out. The better the filter, the harder it is on the water system. And so the more water you use. Like coffee oh, coffee. Filter. Yes, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Now, the one thing that. Um, a filter, even a reverse osmosis system won't get out is fluoride. Okay. And for most people, like, oh, I want fluoride. I want it for my teeth, right? Oh, no, no I, especially the sourcing that we get. It, it's, you know, what we do is we take the, the byproduct of iron smelting, the fluoride that comes off of that, and we put it into our water system. It's not, 
It's not the fluoride that's designed to go in our systems. And then on top of that, fluoride competes with iodine in the thyroid. Yeah. You know, the iodine receptors there, they'll get blocked by the fluoride. And so we invested a little extra money in our Berkey to get the fluoride filter. And actually, can't, it's a dual. It's fluoride and uh, arsenic. So if you go to Berkey.com, you can look at some of the options that they have. They have plastic and they have stainless steel. We use the stainless steel one, of course. Um, but that's, that's about a $500 investment for something like that, where Aquasana, you know, their filters, you know, are like 80 bucks, 40 bucks depending on how much you're willing to invest right now. People ask me all the time, oh yeah, Brita, is that good? You know, I have nothing bad to say about Brita, but I also don't have anything good to say about them either. So yeah, um, the one on your fridge, kind of the same thing, right? Yes? I heard that bottled water can be tap water. Yeah, bottled water can be worse than tap water, absolutely. Um, and one of the main reasons is, what's it sitting in all day? Plastic, and what, what was it shipped in on the way in? Well, the same same plastic bottle, but it was in, in a truck, not temperature controlled because it's just yeah. bottled water. And so if it's sitting in the sun, that breaks down the plastic. The heat yeah. from the truck breaks down the plastic. Sitting in the cold, cold breaks down plastic too. And so that gets into the water as well. Yeah. Oh, they are what they say they are. That's just not very high quality. No, no, it's not going to get out most of this stuff. Now, most of what the Brita and the refrigerator ones are designed to do is just change the taste because people don't like the taste of chlorine, right? I mean, anybody like to sniff chlorine? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Smells clean, right? <laughs> yeah, not good for very much. It's good for making it smell clean. So, yeah, water. We spent a lot of time there. <clears throat> so, next, what are our most toxic filled rooms? Number one is going to be your bathroom. For obvious reasons, right? Number two is going to be your kitchen. And number three is going to be your laundry room. <clears throat> so why? Why is it going to be your bathroom first? Well, I won't say the obvious one because that's just rude, right? But what do you keep in your bathroom? All the cleaners. All the cleaners and the makeup. Makeup is, yeah, the hairspray is really bad too, but makeup, one of the few products that still has lead in it. And you put it directly on your skin or your lips and then you eat through it and it's awful. It's awful. Yeah, no, you and me, we, we have like three beauty products. The rest of this room, like, it's a little bit more than that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, bad guano. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll go back to the bathroom on that one. Um, <clears throat> kitchen. Why is the kitchen going to be more toxic? Aside from the food and the pesticides and herbicides there. Yeah. Soaps and cleaners, right? Now, has, have you guys looked at the, the what's in, like, the stovetop cleaners? Cleaning out the ovens? Like, that's some of the most toxic toxic stuff in the world. Um, when I was 10, 9, fifth grade, however old I was th that year. It was the year I grew nine inches. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, <clears throat> my mom started treating me like an adult because I was bigger than her. <laughs> and she said, Jake, go clean this rust spot on the floor. Handed me a bottle of brown copper cleaner. Thought I was supposed to get rust off. I'm still a kid. I'm 10. I don't read the instructions on it at all. I just dump it on and start scrubbing it because I'm angry that she's making me clean something that I didn't do, right? It was hydrochloric acid in there. Oh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I, it wasn't bad right away. Um, it took about, what, 10 minutes before it started hurting and another 10 minutes after that before I was screaming. And I mean, that's that's something that's been removed from the market because, right, you can't really clean well with that. But yeah, I mean, I mean, fortunately, my, my mom is good friends with some doctors that knew to get some calcium on my hands and, you know, just run my hands underwater as much as possible. And I, I avoided an emergency room visit or any scars on my hands or permanent damage. But it was, yeah, I, I look at every every cleaner bottle now. And in fact... The cleaners I have in my house, white vinegar, and 
not that guy. Uh, <laughs> that's been recalled. That's like the most toxic of the most toxic cleaners right now. Um, uh, yeah, the Fabuloso down there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, n don't use that. <laughs> I thought it was grape juice. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, right? Yeah, get, you'll be in for a nasty surprise there. Um, yeah, baking soda. Baking soda. So you get your acid with the vinegar, you get your base with the baking soda, and you can clean anything with those two. You don't need more. Now, if you want more, you want something to wash your dishes with. Uh, uh, actually, doTERRA has some really great soaps and cleaning products. Um, you know, the hand wash, the foaming hand wash, if I had a better dispenser, I would get that for the office instead of using uh, this stuff, which is a zero on EWG's safe cleaning list for that. So this is really good stuff too. That's everyone. So, so a lot of good stuff there. And the laundry room, again, cleaners, right? Bleach is one of the nastiest cleaners out there. Where does it come from? Chlorine, which comes from World War I. And the trench warfare, like, oh, man, it's cleaning up these trenches really well. Let's bring it into our homes, <laughs> right? No, no, it's awful. That clean smell is literally brain cells dying. Yeah. That's, it's awful. Get it out of your house. Like, I, I keep throwing away bottles that my mother-in-law brings over because she can't get our whites white enough when she stops in. I'm like, you don't need to do our laundry first off. But second off, this goes in the trash, <laughs> right? So we got we to gotta look out for that. So <clears throat> environmental working group, I mentioned them a whole lot. So take a picture, get your cell phones out, and then go to these websites later. Um, basically, it's the uh, Healthy Living app. Um, it's also called Skin Deep. It's, they've changed the name a, a few times, but these are links to the app and links to the website uh, to help you get to that. But yeah, you can just go to ewg.org and punch in whatever it is that's in your house that you use. It'll tell you how clean it is. It'll tell you that this is a zero out of 10 on the toxicity scale. It'll tell you that even though this Kiss My Face brand is really good, it's a five out of 10 on the toxicity scale. That the Tom's, which seems like it's so good, but is owned by Colgate, you know, is a five out of 10 on the toxicity scale. That the Colgate is the same, five out of 10, and has fluoride in it. You know, the Crest is the same. You know, and then the Fabuloso is 10 out of 10, has been recalled because of how toxic it is. You know, why is tomato ketchup on there? Well, it's not actually, you can't find it on EWG. Okay. It's on there because tomatoes are on the dirty dozen, yeah. which means there is some of the most heavily sprayed food. Plus it comes with sugar. So you're getting pesticides and you're getting all that stuff. So yeah, we got to gotta have a tool to get that out. Toxics, toxins in our bathroom. Number one is going to be medication. There is no safe medication. <laughs> a safe medication would be one that would have no side effects. Last year, what, what's the safest medication you can think of? Aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, right? You can, they're over the counter. 16,500 people died last year from taking NSAIDs, non-steroidal non anti-inflammatories. And that's the safest of the safe, right? Now, I, my, my wife, we got strep throat together. She, she was just dying. She could barely breathe with it. And she, she got some ibuprofen because she just couldn't breathe. And she said, do you want some? I said, no, get that stuff away from me. You know, I, I'm not judging you for your choice. I'm not in the pain that you are. Like, if you have to take it, take whatever. But me, like, I'd better be dying or about to lose a limb to, to take a medication at all, Right. That's their, that's their time and place. There's always a time and a place for these things. And to keep them in your medicine cabinet, in your bathroom, is just asking for trouble. What's the number one thing that females, especially, turn to when they want to commit suicide? Medications, old medications in the medicine cabinet. Yeah, medications by themselves are responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths every year. <clears throat> Cleaners. Obviously, we talked about that. Cosmetics, shampoo and conditioner, face wash, soap, hairspray, toothpaste. Another one, um, you can find sodium lauryl sulfate, which is an engine degreaser in most toothpaste. Doesn't have it. Doesn't have anything even close to it, right? So that's why I use this. This is why I bought this. And you don't have to use that much. I mean, if this is too much for you, get some baking soda. Put in a little bit of coconut oil. Rub that on your teeth. This is doTERRA um, toothpaste. Yeah, it's on guard toothpaste. So it actually it helps boost your immune system while you're brushing your teeth with it. 
right? It, it's fantastic stuff. Um, deodorant, right? I, I couldn't find many beauty products. Um, so yeah, you and me here, doTERRA uh, natural deodorant. And it actually works, right? Um, this is a good brand. Um, so say, my, my kids don't like the spray sunscreen, but Alba Botanica, this is actually Jessica Alba's brand. Uh, she gets everything organic. This is, this is a zero out of 10 on the, on the toxicity scale. So good things. And then uh, how many uses do we have for coconut oil? At least 300 that I've counted, at least. But yeah, you can replace just about anything with coconut oil. <laughs> not, not really. It's not like uh, my big fat Greek wedding where you, know, you just spray a little uh, Windex on everything and it takes care of it. Not quite that good. But yeah, almost, almost. Yeah. So yeah, change everything out. That cosmetics list is definitely huge there. Biggest three overuses that we have of medications in this country. Number one would be antibiotics. Antibiotics, we're creating super bugs. We're creating super bugs. Yeah, and where's most of the antibiotic use? It's not in humans. It's in cows. It's in cattle. And so when you eat cattle that have been you know, raised, given antibiotics, some of that gets into you. Some of those super bugs are more prone to get into you as well. <clears throat> yeah, plus the growth hormone and everything else that comes along with it. Antacids. Most antacids lower the acidity of your stomach. They make it more alkaline. But how do, how, when is more of that reflux, when is more of that sensation actually come in? When your stomach acid is too low, when you become too basic. And so it's actually doing the opposite of what it should be in order to actually fight it. It makes you feel better, masks the symptom, it doesn't actually fix it. Laxatives, yeah, right? Stop it. <laughs> if you need to poop, let me help you. Let's change the diet. Let's get to the cause of the problem. Toxins in the kitchens, cleaners, storage containers, pots and pans, and food. Storage containers are a big one. I, I love my Rubbermaid. I love, yeah, Pyrex is way better. Pyrex is the best. And try to, try to keep any like acidic liquids away from the plastic top. Don't overfill it and smush it and it spill out the side and store it like that. Try to keep it in glass and try to keep it away from the top. Liquids in general, I would keep away from plastic because they're going to leach more. You know, if, if it's dry, it's not going to leach, leach as much. Like if you're storing quinoa or you're stealing, storing uh, uh, rice, it's not going to leach from the plastic. Pots and pans we talked about a little bit. And then food. Uh, yeah, food. We already covered food. So many pesticides and herbicides that get in our stuff. Dirty dozen clean 15. That's another thing on EWG.org that they put out every single year. They tell you which foods have the most pesticides and herbicides and which ones have the least. And then it's up to you. What's your budget? Start with your animal products. Get your animal products at minimum organic. Ideally, grass-fed, grass-finished. They'll have the least amount of toxic load. Then go to your dirty dozen list and look at the apples. Look at the tomatoes. Look at you know the sweet corn. Then go to the things that aren't on either list, the things that are in the middle. And then last, you can change over the clean 15. Toxins in the laundry room. Detergent, if it's on your clothes, it's getting on your skin. Even if it was rinsed, it's not getting all that out of there. How can you tell? Oh, it smells like the stuff in the bottle, right? If you can smell it, it's still there. Stain removers, probably even more toxic because it's in higher concentration to get that stain out. And then bleach is the worst. Don't clean with it. I mean, maybe if you need to dump it on your engine block in your car, like do that. It's fine outside. I hear Coca-Cola actually does a great job of cleaning engines. Oven yeah, oven cleaner. Yeah, stay away. Pay, pay somebody else to spray it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Where did you find those lists you called the dirty dozen? Is that? EWG.org. Okay, good. And, and you can just Google it and it'll take you to a graphic that you can actually cut out and it's like business card size and you keep it in your wallet. So you go to the grocery store and you, you look and it's like, oh yeah, I need to get that one organic. Or I don't have to get that one organic. So pretty easy. I've given them out in the past on shopping tours. So stress. There was a study done by um, Dr. Bruce Lipton. He, he was the um, president of the School of Medicine at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, he was doing tons and tons of research about heart health just got frustrated with the medical system and he ended up uh, resigning and wrote a book called The Biology of Belief. 
And what he said is that what happens is that when you stress, it actually acts like a toxin in your body, that it's like this tangible toxin that makes you sick. And what happens when you stress and is you actually release stress hormones from your ad adrenal glands. You go into a state of fight or flight and that those hormones and the nervous system together, they coordinate to bring blood and energy away from the digestive organs into the extremities so that you can fight off a tiger. Yeah. Or you can pick, off, pick up a car off a, a grandchild, right? So that's great in a minute, but if you have cortisol running around your body and you're not getting blood and energy to your digestive system, what can't you do anymore? You can't digest. And guess what else it cuts off blood flow to? Reproductive and endocrine organs, right? Other than the stress ones, you're not, you're not making a baby, but guess what? Your estrogen, your testosterone, your progesterone, they're also getting off. Guess what else is getting off? Your insulin, you crave sugar. It's the one thing that you can actually consume and absorb when you're under stress is sugar. And so stress is, stress is awful. So we need to manage our stress, right? No, don't manage your stress. What you focus on grows. That's a writer downer. What you focus on grows. And so if you focus on your stress, you focus on the struggle, you will be stuck in it. So what you need to do, just like anything else, is focus on what's causing the stress, not the stress itself. Right? Not my sister. She always brings up this such crazy things about the family and it always gets me in a like no. <laughs> Don't tell me to calm down. All right. No, we, we create peace. Peace management. What are the things that we can do to create peace in our lives? So here's some examples here. Number one, take a walk. Just take a walk. One, it removes you from the situation. You're walking away from the stress, right? But two, it starts giving you a little bit of exercise, which we're going to get into in a minute as far as just its ability to help you detoxify. But taking a walk, it, it actually releases endorphins into your body. You know, just really, we talked about this the other day for, you know, you two were in the class the other day. We were talking about just moving the soleus muscle. Just doing this, not even walking. You can be in your chair, just up and down like this. It actually stimulates the soleus muscle, which makes your body think you're walking. And so you get more benefit out of doing that than you do even sitting there and doing like bicep curls or shoulder presses or, or squat type exercises. So if you can do nothing else, pretend to walk. Pretend to walk. When we have our meetings, there's a few that get so upset. I know, I know. <clears throat> number, number two is journaling. And the reason I say journaling, I actually tell this to people when it comes to sleep and getting to sleep at night, is there's something that happens in your brain when you write things down that actually releases you from carrying that thing. Because when, when you don't write it down, you need to remember it, right? Or intuitively, you just kind of think you need to remember this thing. If, you know, I got to carry, I got to dwell on it, I got to process this. But if you write it down, it releases you from being able, from having to remember it. I mean, the same thing is true with a schedule, right? If you keep your schedule in your head, you have to carry that burden. If you write it down, you don't have to remember. So journal it. And even better than that, how about a gratitude journal? Focus on what you're thankful for, the good things that happened in that day. Uh, I heard a story about a family that lost a baby, a miscarriage. And miscarriages are awful. Um, we went through one between my first and second. Um, but the, uh, the mom was on a 30-day challenge in the middle of this miscarriage. And the challenge was to write one good thing down. That happened that day. And for the life of her, she couldn't think of a good thing that happened that day. But she dug in and she did it. And she was able to come up with the amazing support of the people that God had placed around her. And because of that, she was actually able to look back on that time, not, not just with joy, you know, obviously some sorrow, but there was joy in it. 
there was still joy present in one of the most difficult situations you can go through. Reading. And not reading on a screen, not reading on a Kindle, not reading on a laptop, not reading on a TV, <laughs> but actually picking up a, a book with physical pages and doing some self-improvement. You know, talking about uh, taking a walk. Yeah. I've read books on forest bathing. Uh, yes. It means you take a bath in a tree. <laughs> so what it means is you walk amongst yeah. trees, yeah. you yeah. get amongst nature. Yeah. Admire a little flower. Listen to that pretty bird mm -hmm. singing up there. Yeah. Uh, there's a pretty rock over there. Or yeah. Gurgling brook. Don't take your cell phone with you. Yeah. yeah. Throw it away. But, uh, no. No, they used to have these things called cameras that didn't beep at you every five minutes. Right? So uh, my wife, she's an architect, and she's very, very interested in the uh, architecture of space. Yeah. yeah she's, she's now the um, uh, director of uh, interior architecture and design at her company. And one of her favorite books and one of her favorite studies was one uh, where she was reading about the mental well-being of desk workers in cubicles in relationship to where they were with windows, but also if they had a view of even just a single tree, their mental well-being was enormously higher. So getting in nature is huge. And then if you can do quality time with your family at the same time, it just grounds you in the people that you care about most, unless they're being this stress, right? <laughs> right? Then maybe just take a walk by yourself. See a tree. <laughs> Yeah, grounding. Yeah. yeah, there's there's not a lot of science on it right now, but there's something real about it. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. we know that there's electrical fields in everything, right? We know that there's electrical fields in everything. And so as often as possible, I try to take my shoes off and walk in my grass. And, the one and hug a tree, <laughs> yes. And hug a tree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's... There's something about it that's still very difficult to measure and quantify. And so science hates it, but it's real, right? Just like your soul is real, just like the thoughts that are happening inside your brain are real. It's real and it definitely de-stresses you. They can measure the stress levels changing, but it's not something that they can quantify as far as what's happening. Technology uh, and really, let's, let's just call it uh, media in general. Anybody talking to you, I don't care who it is, has an agenda. I have an agenda. Hopefully it's a good one for you guys tonight. Hopefully you're being edified for the agenda. Your pastor has an agenda every Sunday if you're going to church. Fox News has an agenda. MSNBC has an agenda. You don't know someone's agenda. Turn it off. Take a break. If the Russians invade, I don't need to know about it for at least a week. <laughs> yeah 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 it, it's okay you know you guys usually tell me i don't have to look at the news <laughs> what kind of news do i like well i like to i like to hear that the huskers won right that, that's good news or we signed a five-star quarterback or <laughs> that's good news i don't want to hear the complainers cut out the negative nancys but that's what sells in the media is negative nancys they're going to go on and they're going to complain about something. You know, I like to listen to, you know, some conservative voices every once in a while because that kind of fills me where I'm at. But I get so negative. I got to turn them off. I got to turn them off. We got to detox from the negativity in our world. And if it's coming through here, or if it's coming through that cell phone, not odds are good that it's going to be negative. And so take a break, you know, do a cleanse. And I'm speaking to myself there. Sweat more. Step four. Oh, my goodness. we got two more st steps to go, and I'm already 10 minutes over. All right. So let's crank this out. Sweat more. Um, they did a study on this. Um, they were looking for BPA. BPA is bad. It comes from plastics. It's an endocrine disruptor. You can get cancers with it. You can get all sorts of stuff. And they were trying to measure it in people. And they measured blood. They measured urine. And they measured sweat in the same people. They couldn't find it in the blood. They couldn't find it in the urine. It was in the sweat. Why was it in the sweat? Well, it stores itself in fat cells and only sweat, the things that make you sweat are good enough to help get that out. And so that's one of the reasons why I love the infrared sauna 
not only does it stimulate mitochondria to increase your metabolism, but in doing so, it creates that sweating process. And so as your fat cells start to break down and it releases things like BPA and other toxins from your bloodstream, that sweat gets it out. And then the, the far infrared rays, they actually uh, clean it as well. That far infrared radiation, it's antimicrobial. So if it, even if it is like getting some bacteria and some viruses out of you at the same time, killing them once they get outside of your body. And so it's fantastic. It's one of the reasons why I'm including it in that bundle. One of the best ways to get yourself to sweat is through high intensity, short duration exercise. And so that's not just taking a walk. Unfortunately, until it's about 90 degrees, you're going to have trouble getting a good sweat, in, right? With just a walk. Now, if you go outside with dumbbells and you're taking your walk and you start doing this, pumping your arms, you'll start breaking a sweat. Even better than that, pump as hard as you can for 20 seconds or pump as hard as you can for 20 seconds. Give yourself a 20 second break and then go back. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. You will sweat better. Your metabolism will jump higher. You'll get more bang for your buck. We had to wait an hour and a yeah. half in line in the car, and it was warm enough. We That'll were... make you sweat. That'll make you sweat. It's like a hot box in there. Yeah. So burn calories during and after work workouts. It's um, the uh, metabolic effect. It's called EPOC, um, excess post-oxygen consumption. Yeah, it's the fun. I, yeah. So we need to be looking at um, what's – you know, what the, the quality of that exercise in. You can walk for an hour and not get as much benefit out of uh, even just 12 minutes of exercise. You could do that three days in a row, three days of walking for an hour, and you wouldn't get the same benefit as you would of one day of 12 minutes of high intensity interval training. 12 minutes. Yeah, just 12 minutes. Find your routine. It has to be something you like. And, and really, if you're not exercising, just do something. You know, this is enough if you're doing nothing right now. You know, but then find something that you enjoy, right? You see that smile on her face? Find something that you enjoy. Find something that puts that, you know, go, go walk in the woods and hug a tree. And 20-second hold, 20-second release. 20-second hold, 20-second, you know, just do something that you enjoy that's going to put that kind of smile on your face. The it's the guy. Yep, go with somebody else. Step five, keep your spine aligned, right? Come see me, all right? So here's, here's the one thing. If you take nothing else away from this, you can go 30 days without food. You can go three days without water. You can go three minutes without air. You can't go a single second without nerve supply. You can't go a single second well. without nerve supply. Nerve supply. Nerve supply. And, you know, you think about these amazing organs that God designed to help your body detox. The liver, the kidneys, the skin, all designed to help you be able to detox and detox efficiently and to get poisons out. Even your digestive system. It's this big, long tube from here to here, right? Yeah. It's designed to get toxins out. But none of it works if your nerve supply is not working. And if it's working at less than 100%, all of those systems are working at less than 100%. Just having a single vertebra out of alignment, two millimeters or two degrees, is enough to disrupt the signals going through that segment by 60% if left there for just five minutes. Yeah. And so how can you tell? How can you tell? This is Matt. A lot of you guys know Matt, right? The energetic guy that sat at our front desk for you know, several months here. When he came to me, he was talking about getting shoulder replacement surgery, having surgical repair on his arm, on his upper back, because he's his high-level athlete, right? He played lacrosse. He got checked too many times. He played football, played basketball. He was hard on his body. And so you can see the curve is supposed to look like this, 45-degree curve. If you lose even half of that, just 22 degrees in that direction, it takes 20 years off of your life expectancy. His was negative. It was going the wrong way, right? It was keeping his body from being able to heal. I put him on a corrective plan. I saw him three times a week for two months. 
That was one month in. We got him back to 22 degrees. Obviously, he's a little bit younger than most of us. He's younger than me. He was also doing the work. How do we get there? Mix, fix, set. And you could see the change in him as it happened. Right? He's not, he's not all there yet. He still has stresses on his life. You know, that's why you keep getting adjusted. But chiropractic actually helps the body detox. We, we've measured this. Your body detoxes better. I mean, you bring an infant to me that's not pooping. Let me adjust them. You think they're detoxing better after I adjust them? Yeah, it's all over their diaper within 20 minutes. Yeah, babies do it super fast and super well. I don't even need an x-ray on a baby. But for most of us, we've got too many, too many stresses in our life. We need to take that x-ray. Once a kid hits six years old, too many stresses in their life. We don't want to skip that. What are some warning signs? Well, let's just start at the top. Headaches. Yeah, that's a sign of toxicity. That's also a sign that you're subluxated, that the, you've got misalignments in your spine that are putting pressure on the nerves. Not just blocking the nerves, right? But also blocking blood flow and blocking cerebrospinal fluid flow. <clears throat> yeah, talking to a couple of people today that were asking me about, yeah, headaches. And if I thought I could help, I was like, I think I can. I mean, most headaches are misalignments at the top. I'd love to see what that is, is as the CSF training, is the brain able to communicate down there? Are any of those nerves pinched? You know, is there proper blood flow to that area? Drop down to the middle of the neck. Thyroid issues, hormone issues. Hormone cascades starts at the top, then goes to the thyroid, goes to the adrenal glands, goes to the reproductive organs. If one of these is not getting proper nerve supply, it's gonna affect all the hormones all the way down. You go down to the upper back and shoulders. You get some stress across the shoulders, raises your stress levels. Blood pressure goes up. Pulse rate goes up. What happens if you get a massage there? Well, not much to the blood pressure. Stress might come down a little bit. If you're pinching the nerves that go off there, it's, it's going to lead to a decreased functioning heart, decreased functioning lungs. Go down a little bit. Digestive system, you need that stomach acid to break down any of the bad things that are coming in. Destroy it. Detoxify, right? <clears throat> We can get a spastic upper back. We can get a digestive system that gives us reflux. You know, we can actually have the esophageal sphincter prolapse and get that going backward, give us really bad reflux there. Go down a little bit further, get spastic muscles in the low back, get spastic colon. Now that's not allowing us to go as much as we want to. We're only going once a day instead of two, three times a day. It's backing up. You're getting more and more toxic. We sever that connection. Now it doesn't matter if you're getting organic food. Now it doesn't matter if you're regenerative farming. Now it doesn't matter if you're getting grass-fed beef because you're not able to communicate to digest and absorb that living, loving, thinking clay. You know, same thing down here with the bladder. One of the biggest things I see with men, especially, L5 goes out and all of a sudden they can't pee. Or they're up all night because they're peeing every 15 minutes because that bladder has started to uh, become dysfunctional. Or the prostate got disconnected and it starts enlarging and it starts pressing on the bladder or blocking off that, those valves in there. And so we need to make sure that we're keeping a healthy spine so that these organ cells and tissues can function at 100%. Well, how do you do it? Well, you have to start with an x-ray. You have to know where you're at, right? You know, this, we address the cause. What's the number one principle of detox? Stop the exposure. What's the number one principle of uh, getting your spine back in alignment? Know where it is and stop the things that are taking it away from the normal position. Right? And then let's actually correct it. And so we go through mix, fix, set on a daily basis. Maybe you guys don't get the fix on a daily basis, but we regularly incorporate mix, fix, set. Warm up the spine every single day. Something we should have been taught at five years old to do. Wobble exercises. Even if I get your spine into a normal position, you will be wobbling the rest of your life if you want a healthy spine. If you don't want a healthy spine, don't wobble, right? It, it will degenerate and it will fuse together. It's just Wolf's Law. That's how it works. Fix, that's the adjustments. If you don't need to be fixed, I'll tell you and I'll give you a high five, right? I've yet to find a person that doesn't need an adjustment. The people that don't want it the, the most are the ones that need it the most, right? because they're subluxated somewhere in there to think that they don't need a healthy spine or that they can do it on their own. They can't. Nobody, I can't do it on my own. 
I'm the expert in the spine. I get adjusted at least once a week. Why? Because I put too much stress into my spine on a daily basis, and it's prone to going down this pathway. I want to go this way. Hopefully most of you do too. So mix, fix, set. The set is retraining, strengthening the postural muscles of the spine. If you don't do it that way, it doesn't get fixed. I got adjusted for three years by chiropractors that didn't know mix, fix, set. They thought the fix was enough. They thought just adjust, just adjust, just adjust. My spine had lost half of the curve in the neck. Pathological tension. I didn't feel it, but until I took an x-ray, I also didn't see it. My chiropractors weren't telling me because they weren't looking for it either. They're like, okay, let's feel what's out. Oh, that needs to be adjusted. It's a little tight. Crack. Didn't fix anything. It kept it loose, but it didn't fix anything. And so you need that mix, fix, set protocol or else it will go that way instead of that way. Health is 100% function. If you're defining health by how you feel, you're missing the mark. You're going to miss the mark every single time because you're going to make bad choices. If that's me. I make bad choices. I'm not up here saying I'm holier than thou, Dr. Jake, Pastor Jake, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I ate ice cream and pizza over the weekend. I took my wife out to Green Gateau um, on Sunday. And because I was eating out, I wanted something that I don't normally make. Yeah, I make good food, but I don't keep pancake stuff in my house. So I wanted pancakes. And I put some bacon on there. And then I put some, you know, over easy eggs. And it was fabulous. And I paid for it all night. Right? <laughs> my detox system was working pretty close to 100. But it decreased my overall function because of the toxins I was exposed to in there. Right? When I eat that pizza, even when you get 100% organic food, there's going to be things that are toxic in there. You know, you're going to sit too long. I sat for hours preparing this presentation. Yeah, I know. we got to get up and do some of that exercise, right? <laughs> Right, And so we lose some of that function. And if we're not actively working at it, we're losing it. So focus on getting there. Focus on getting to that 100% function. So B.J. Palmer, he was the son of D.D. Palmer. He was right there while D.D. was develop or starting the profession. He's called the developer of the profession. He was the first uh, president of the uh, Palmer School of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa. He said that while other professions are concerned with changing the environment to suit the weakened body, Chiropractic is concerned with strengthening the body to suit the environment. All right. While the world's going to hell in a handbasket around us, we have to get stronger. All right? We have to get stronger. So what are your action steps? Well, first, I would look at your notes. What did you write down that stuck out to you? You're not going to do everything you wrote down, especially those of you that filled out two or three pages of notes tonight. Pick between one and three things. One in three things that you're going to do, that you can do. And then six months from now, review those notes and go back and say, did I do it or didn't I? That's step number one. Pick between one and three things. I don't want you to waste this knowledge here tonight. Pick something, something that you can take action on. I mean, every time I prepare these, it convicts me a little bit. I need to get better at something. This time it was exercise. Guess what I didn't want to do after Christmas? <laughs> Exercise, because it meant getting cold, usually. And I don't like cold. I went to Georgia for school and practiced in Georgia and Florida for a couple years because I like it warm. So I exercise in the summertime, and it's not a healthy lifestyle. So I have to get back on track. Right? For me, it's exercise. For a lot of us, it might be exercise. But really, the, the most important area that we need to work on is the one that we're not currently. When you look at these five essentials, you might have written down a lot for stress. You might have written down some stuff for chiropractic. You might have written down some stuff for nutrition. You might have written down something in each of these categories. The most important category to address is the one where you're addressing it the least right now. Because the one that you're addressing the least is the one that's going to come back and get you. And so if, if you're not getting adjusted, let's start with the next ray and see where your spine's at. If you're not doing your home care, start doing your home care. If you're stressed beyond the wazoo, maybe you need to talk to somebody. Maybe you need some professional help. Maybe call a counselor, your church pastor or somebody. Get somebody to talk to. Nutrition. If, you, if you're on the seafood diet, if you see it, you eat it. Let's start working on that, right? 
You got some addictions, you haven't addressed them, or you learned something tonight that's going to help you overcome that, maybe that's where you go. If you're not exercising like me, maybe we start there. If you're uh, minimizing your toxins, you haven't even thought about it until tonight. And you go there. So pick your thing. Your thing isn't going to be my thing. My thing isn't going to be your thing. We all got different things. No judgment here. I'm here to help, right? And so that's what actually Cheryl and I are here to help. Um, between the two of us, we bring 50 years combined experience. Yeah, only 10 of those are mine, but yeah. The next thing is we don't stop here, right? We have to grow out of this. And so for some of us, that's bringing a friend along for the journey, right? And so that's actually what the community dinner is for. Um, so the community dinner, it's a $20 meal, unless you bring somebody that hasn't been to a community dinner before. And the point of the community dinner is us changing isn't enough. It doesn't go beyond this room, really, if all we do is change. There's so many people out there that are sick, suffering, and dying because they didn't hear this tonight. They should have been here. You know, and you can think of them. Maybe some of them are belligerent and won't listen to a word I have to say. Some of them will come for the free food and, again, won't listen to a word I say. Some of them, you know, are ready. You know it better than I do, but, I mean, really, we just need to tell them because they're ultimately the ones that need to choose for themselves how to get healthy. So Monday, May 5th, so a week from today, at 6.15, here in the office, May 1st, May 1st. yeah, I said 15th, May 1st, May 1st, uh, at 6.15, I will be buying dinner, it's free if you bring a friend, and that friend cannot have come to a dinner before, <laughs> otherwise I'm just free, feeding you free food, right, yeah, if, if you just want to come and see what it is before you bring anybody, $20 covers the cost of the meal. I make it a nice meal. We usually have chicken Caesar salad, a little bit of wine, and a healthy, de healthy dessert. You don't have to tip me afterwards, right? It's just good. Just good stuff. Um, inflammation replay. So Cheryl mentioned the inflammation class. Um, you can go back and catch it on YouTube. Uh, however, on May 6th, Saturday, uh, at 1130, I will be at Natural Grocers over just off of O Street and 48th in their lecture space. And uh, I'll be doing that class live in person for anybody that wants to come. So if your person's not available on May 1st because it's a weekday night and they got to get up early the next day, bring them to the inflammation replay on May 6th. Um, it won't be the same content, but it will be the inflammation content. So if you've got anybody that's dealing with an autoimmune disorder, if you've got anybody that's dealing with arthritis of any kind, if you've got anybody that um, is an American, then you should bring them. <laughs> because we're all dealing with inflammation. So that'll be on Monday, May 6th. Uh, 11.30 is the time, I believe. That might be my setup time, but if you show up at 11.30, you won't miss it. Yeah, so it might be a noon, noon start. And you can shop, that's right. Uh, and you can ask me about products because I'll just be setting up my computer. Uh, the next class that we're doing here is the Gut Honest Truth. And that'll be just less than a month from today. Uh, today's the 24th, that'll be on the 22nd, but it's a Monday at 6.15, and we're gonna be talking about gut health. Obviously, I could have gone down the gut rabbit hole a whole lot deeper than I did with detoxing. I was only supposed to give us an hour, and we're at an hour and a half, <laughs> or hour and 45 minutes now. Um, and so it's, yeah, I want you to be able to have that. Um, so uh, for you guys, I've got these sign-up sheets. So first come, first serve. Obviously, I don't have room for the entire city in here. Um, but I'll pass these around. If you want to come to the dinner, sign up for the first one, write the guest name down that you want to bring. And then everybody who came tonight, if you didn't bring this or you don't have one of these, you should come get one of these because this is good for an additional 5% off. So everything's 15% off tonight. If ever you bring this in, this is worth five, five more percent, right? So tonight it's good for 20%. Unless, see all these logos up here? You get a punch on the logos. The punch is good for another percentage point off. And so tonight, you're going to get a punch. So you're actually getting 21 per, or yeah, 21 percent off. You get the package, you're getting 26 percent off. If you already have punches because, because you came to other classes, you get another punch. And you're up to eight percent or nine percent tonight. If you're watching online, sorry, 
you're not here to get a card. You don't get percentage points off. Uh, you have to be here in person. This is, this is another incentive for you guys to make the right choices in being healthy. It's a way to make things more affordable, a way to reward you guys as well. So make sure, make sure you're signing up for those classes. Make sure you get a punch tonight um, and uh, you get, get a chance to sign up for those things on the clipboard. Yeah, the Gut Honest Truth, uh, I will be happy to do so on Monday. Yeah. May 22nd, at <laughs> 6.15. Yeah, digestive system. Yep, yep, May 22nd. Monday, May 22nd, 6.15. We're focusing on the gut. We're going to spend the same hour and the time on, on the gut health. Exactly. The, ba the brain gut, the gut brain, yeah, however you call it. So definitely plug in with that. And then uh, if you haven't followed me on Facebook yet, Guess where you can find this class? Not Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> so follow the YouTube class. Yeah, yeah, put your phone numbers on there as well. So I'm going to go turn off the camera. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to stick around and answer those. And make sure you get your supplements and your discounts tonight as well.